What's up? I'm Grizz. Welcome back. Episode 5 of Skipping Loafer. We had some promises and stuff made between, you know, Shima and Mitsumi about dreams and everything that they might have and just being there for a friend if something happens, good or bad, as well as Mitsumi kind of hopefully starting to wrap her head around the idea that not everybody can be the same or do things the same or has the same kind of path in life and everybody does things different and takes up things just differently and is their own person in a way and needs to learn from that and learn what they are capable of or what they enjoy and what they want to do and find their own correct path for them and hopefully she starts taking <laughs> a bit more notice of that and applying it aside of that i don't really know where we're gonna head here once again i think it's just another episode of daily life of me to be here exploring who she is and what exactly she wants to learn and can you know relationships and stuff with friends so hopefully you know all goes well and we enjoy what we see uh if you like it all hit the like and subscribe to mean a lot to me feel free to stick around for that discussion and leave any comments about this episode or the series in general as well as recommend any other shows you might want to see me watch at some other point let's get going with episode five midterms already damn well, that came up quick Mm -hmm. The competition to help drive you. This girl is like Maki from Love is War if she was in a different show. <laughs> and this reminds me of the girl from Mika. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. So it's like a like festival type thing? I don't think they said that, unless I missed it. Or just like whatever, and they're having events or competition between the classes. <laughs> I'd rather a solo event or not be involved. <laughs> so Mitsubi chooses volleyball, the thing that we literally just saw her get destroyed by last episode. <laughs> <laughs> this does not come as a surprise. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> your coordination ain't all there. Strangely, though, I would expect somebody from like a small country town to be good with outdoorsy type things, such as, you know, sports and physical things. I can't do that. Mm. There you go, you can make friends. Oh. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> That's how you got ripped into it. Uh, complete 180 of the personality. Absolutely. There you go. Egashira-san, <laughs> <laughs> She's trying though. She's trying. Hey, Kore. Eh, you know you're so nice. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so私、結構小食で。うん。一人安いから節制してるんだって。え、なったらあがだ。やっぱり優しい人みたい。ラッキーだったね、岩倉さん。I <laughs> Mm. She's talked about this before with effort and the way that she has to kind of try with the way she dresses herself up and stuff. <笑>あ、やるしくね。うん。二人とか。今日は一年生が使う曜日なのに。Oh <笑> Ooh. And then the nerve to not even say anything, but Mitsubi's gonna stay in the hope. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> hey, that was probably a lot for her. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just dismissive. 
What happens if they're on that list, though? That's what I want to know. Just a mental note, or you got, you know, we death note type thing. <laughs> but she tried staying that up. Yeah, that's true. Better be safe than sorry. <laughs> The reaction. Oh, because she... Right, right, right. Yeah. Sure. I'm more on Miko's side with that. <laughs> Personally, I, I, I turn out to be like that. Look at these two hanging out. I like it. Uh, then you see the side of her that's trying to improve and be strong for others. Mm. Constantly comparing herself. Mm. She's trying to make herself out to be someone that she's not. I guess what an ideal image of her would be like. Mm. <laughs> it's not even that she's twisted in the sense that she's just like a bad person. It's more she's had things that have occurred to her over time that have twisted her and her personality, I guess, in a way. Uh, forcing her to kind of believe and think and act on certain things in certain ways, it appears. Right. She wanted somebody that'd be straightforward in that sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, look how much she's already improved. Not a lot, but... うん。褒めてないよ。そんな。わかってるよ。本当に。明日もこれる。うん。じゃあ、一緒に岩倉さん教えて。久米さんは動画とか記録撮って。そう、you <笑><笑> can do. <笑> <笑><笑> Yeah, we're acting all different, aren't we now? <laughs> Something so simple. The encouragement and reassurance of others can do a lot for a person. Something as simple as that's going to replay in our mind constantly. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't value those things. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Nice. Let's go. Mm. 
<laughs> she thinks she's gonna do something. <laughs> Aww. I'm not reading all that. <laughs> I must show out for her. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Is this what she meant by they weren't going to get the chance? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, look at him. He's good at everything. Nice. <laughs> but instead, he was so... <laughs> Yeah. And then the guy who makes the shots, like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> You're just realizing this? Okay, sure, sure. Uh, right. That'd be a hell of a power move, though, if she just went ahead and did it, though. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Uh. Isn't that what happened as well, like the first day when they were talking to each other? I mean, did you not see? Oh. <laughs> I'm just finding other things to do. But isn't stage plays and acting and stuff involve physical activity too, if we're being honest? Well, you're essentially trying to say he doesn't have somebody that he's that close with. Because of the distance he forces himself to keep in a way. The perception in which you have versus others of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the monsters of class 5. <laughs> okay, we're going old. <laughs> we're just trying to win. Aww. I don't think he minded at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the tears in her eyes and everything, she returns it. Oh. It was bound to happen, unfortunately. I'm just still holding on to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> うちらも<笑> exactly what Mitsumi has. Yeah. Possibly. Likely, but... <laughs> I'd argue we go pretty Mika-heavy within this episode. While Mitsumi is a strong 
point of exactly what goes on here and her impact and influence and in what she has on others to kind of make them look at her and observe exactly the way that she is, why she's that way, and kind of comparatively put that towards themselves. Uh, Mika is no exception to that and basically does the same exact thing, uh, but we get a lot of focus specifically on her. Would I call this a Mika redemption arc? Probably not, I'll be honest. I, I think that's a, a term I usually use <laughs> when it's we're trying to redeem a character for all the wrongdoings and awful things that they've done, but I don't necessarily think she's done bad things or in incredibly like awful things yet while i do think she's done things and gone about things that have been not ideal or not the right way of doing things uh and i'm question her and her personality sure a little bit uh there's reason behind the things in what she's doing and we've seen glimpses into that into the past such as the situation where they were sitting at the restaurant and she was seeing all the girls around her uh yuzuki specifically and she was comparing how she naturally is just so i guess gifted in a way because of how she looks and the way that she can wear anything and it still makes her ends up looking good where she has to actually put in a lot of effort into the things that she does to make herself kind of come off different or come off appealing in a way uh, and we once again wind up finding that out again this episode what exactly it is that gets her going and why she's kind of altered herself and turned into the way that she is with her personality being a little bit messed up and not that great and it seems to stem from the things that she's had to deal with throughout her past such as probably bullying uh, people probably making fun of and her dealing with the image that she had due to her weight and things like that in the past as they talk about throughout this at one point uh, how she has a small lunch every day and I think I mentioned once they said it and she was like I have to like make sure I don't eat that much because I gain weight really fast and I'm like that's a good thing like she's kind of you know she's looking out for health she's looking out for herself trying to like be good and that happens with plenty of people I know tons of people who just literally have to be very careful about the things that they eat or else they gain weight very easily whereas me in my situation i really don't so i don't have to be overly concerned so i consider myself lucky in that sense but it, it's something that it's a good thing that you are looking out in that situation but the reason why it's bad is because she has to restrict herself due to past experiences and things in which she's had uh, that kind of mentally get to her and don't allow her to feel comfortable with who she naturally is or what she is uh, and she has to miss out on opportunities and things that she wants such as food such as just things that she enjoys eating uh, and different probably activities and stuff that she could do that could involve things that aren't as healthy uh, around her and she has to be very very careful luckily we didn't see a point like see it to a point that she was starving herself it was mainly just her kind of smaller sample sizes and kind of restricting herself from sweets and things like that that aren't good as we specifically see when uh mitsumi hands her a bag of like goodies and stuff that she has in it they're all kind of like junk food in a way so she doesn't really want to take any of that because she does have to also be concerned so it's nice to see that because i know i have seen plenty of shows and there's are plenty you know of people in life who kind of go through that where they they force themselves especially during school years so especially like this uh on a girl who has to see people constantly on a daily basis around her that she compares themselves to uh forcing themselves almost to starve uh the amount of times i would see somebody when i was in high school just like at lunch or something not eating specifically we're talking about girls in the situation not eating due to the fact that they're concerned about gaining weight and they're concerned about all this other stuff even if to the point that like it's kind of like all right i get it because sometimes people just don't eat but then like the more you talk to them and you learn that they're not really eating at home or doing anything either it's almost to a point that they're starving themselves and forcing themselves into these situations because they're trying to get up to standard i guess in a way or what they envision like an ideal standard in their life of everybody around them and what they want to aspire to end up looking like uh, and it seems like yuzuki is the the golden standard in our situation here within the show of what you're supposed to be like the way that you're supposed to look and the way you're supposed to like your body's supposed to be and just everything like that it seems like they're painting her to be kind of that golden standard while on the flip side they're painting somebody like i guess meets me in a way with the way that she acts and her personality to be kind of like that as well but i guess in the same sense yuzuki could also be considered that for both things she yuzuki seems to be the perfect version of everything of all worlds uh and meets me seems to have like certain quirks and things that make her stand out in those certain categories while others don't but she's not 
I guess as well-rounded in a way as Yuzuki is. That's that's the best I can kind of put it. Continuing onward, we are dealing with, I guess we're having, I don't even know exactly what it was. It was like classroom battles in a way. They're having like some sporting events and I don't know what the winner gets, like some sort of prize or what they were doing. I was assuming it was like a festival thing, but it doesn't appear that it was that. Uh, and it appears we're going out of our way to just battle against the other classes in sporting activities such as soccer, table tennis, basketball, volleyball, other sports. And Meets Me ends up signing up to do volleyball for whatever reason. I don't know. We've seen glimpses of how uncoordinated she can be, uh, specifically getting hit last week in the face with a volleyball. Uh, the first episode just fallen over. Just, you know, her, she's all over the place, right? Which is interesting to me too, because she talks about how she's never been good with that type of stuff, uh, but it's interesting because I feel like a lot of times if you are from a country area or an area that's less populated and there's not a lot to do around you, you find yourself outside a lot more uh, because there's really nothing to do. And because of that, you kind of build up something that allows you to become more physically active and gain some physical strength and just go out of the way and do things that most people probably <laughs> wouldn't do as much, especially kids. Uh, and I don't know. The fact that she just didn't turn out that way is really interesting to me. But it's not that important. But regardless, she is somebody who's very concerned, it seems like, with the way that she is at the sport and she just wants to constantly get better. Now, I don't know if they mentioned if it's because she's worried about the other way or the way that others might perceive her uh, and she might look like dumb in a way or she might look bad and she doesn't doesn't want others to make fun of her or think that she's like holding the team back or something. I don't know the exact reasoning for what it was and or if they said that or not. Uh, but it is nice to see that she still wants to just get better, even if it's for one of those reasons or if it's for personal growth. Uh, and she just wants to see herself become better and not be let herself down in a way and be able to be useful some sort of way so she goes out of her way to look for some sort of coach somebody who can help her improve her skills a little bit uh which is where we end up finding ourselves with mika overall and mika kind of seems right off the start to have a bad personality and a bad just like stance like not wanting to do this like literally questions herself why am i doing this again like why am i putting myself through this and then the moment you see shima she is a 180 in the way that she is and she's like oh i'm like so happy now uh, because he's here and that she's trying to like show a different side of her out for him again, right? Which results in her ended up trying and working with Mitsumi a lot more um, until we get to a point where Shima isn't around. Shima can't come for whatever reason one day and he can't help them out. So now it's just Mika and Mitsumi. So we get to the gym. The gym actually has third years in it, even though the first years are supposed to be the only one who are allowed to use the gym this day. And Mika starts getting upset about that. That makes her angry, but she's somebody who will bring that up to Mitsumi, but she's not going to vocalize that she's not going to tell anybody that this is like something that's bothering her and she's not going to put that out there so she's not going to go ultra like tell on everybody find a teacher like do all this stuff and she's just going to kind of be angry about it but she won't actually take that action and do something about it so they think it's okay we'll just find our own little area you don't need that much room for them to work on exactly what they're doing so all's okay uh Unfortunately, they end up getting bumped into while two of the people are playing basketball and they just don't even acknowledge them and don't even apologize for anything. And Miko seems to be pretty upset about this. And Mitsumi being the protective person in a way that she is, goes out of her way and busters up all the cards in what she has and tells them like, you shouldn't be here. And they kind of just dismiss her. And that was a lot for her to kind of take on and do. But luckily, I think it was a teacher. It might have not been. It might have just been another student or something. Somebody else kind of just calls them out and is like, yo, you're not supposed to be here. And they end up going away. Mika talks about then how about she thinks that a smart or a better a better way for her to go about it would have been for her to tell a teacher or something and not put herself in harm's way or get herself like out there, which I don't necessarily disagree with. But I think it was nice to see me to be able to stand up, especially for somebody that she probably considers to be her friend in this situation and try to be that protector in some sort of way regardless we see as they're <clears throat> as these third years are walking away though apparently you can read at the bottom of their shoe or the back of their shoe uh they have their their last names like listed on them so mika makes a mental note of it but so does mitsumi where mika's mental note is negative she puts them on the mika list the, <laughs> her her own version of her death note i'm assuming and it's something that she'll never forget. She'll never forgive them for the things that she's done. Very scary, right? But we find out that Mitsumi also has noted down names, but it's not 
the names of the guys that were walking away. It's of the person who told them off and told them to move on and get out of their way, basically. And she recognizes that because they're a good person, because they had a positive impact on her and the things that happened, right? And she had a good outlook overall what happened, where Miko starts to allow this to realize, oh, I have such a negative viewpoint on things. I look at everything from such a bad perspective. While I'm over here cursing these people out because of all the bad things that they, they've done here, uh, she's looking for somebody who had a positive impact and did something good. And it's the same thing that can be applied to other situations that we've experienced throughout this the show regarding the both of them so far where Mika starts comparing herself to others starts comparing situations and people together and starts looking at the negative things like the flaws within her or other things where you can see Mitsumi starts looking for positive things or things that she can take away from others and we've seen that for plenty of episodes last episode when we were working on the scheduling she didn't look at the senpai scheduling as oh this is bad for me oh this you're killing yourself doing this or something like along those lines she looked at it as how admirable that you're trying so hard and working so hard towards this one thing right she tries to pick out the positive things that can come along with what people are doing and mika absolutely cannot do that and i unfortunately am with mika on this i, I feel like a lot of people actually are where I would prefer to see positive things and remember those positive experiences because they have such a good impact on you, you would feel like. But a lot of times you can only really recall negative experiences. I feel like even in life, which is, is sad to say, I, the more I think about it, I can recall a lot of things that like have been negative or have kind of like stared me away from certain things because they've been, I don't know if traumatic's the right word, but I guess it would be. And it's been so impactful on me. Like it's, it's caused so much like emotionally or mentally like damage on me that it's something that can constantly replay in your mind or is very vivid where I feel like while there are specific things that are positive and good things in life that have happened right and I can very easily you know visualize all those in my mind I feel like those are so much more limited and I wouldn't even necessarily say it's because I've had such less experiences in that area I would just say for whatever reason, the negatives stick out to me more than the positives do, which I think is the, the, the typical glass half full or glass half empty type thing, right? And just kind of your perspective and the way that you kind of view things and take on certain situations and ideas. But it, it is interesting to see that Mika find herself completely like this. Her continuing to hide these things and well, of course, she doesn't seem like she has anybody that she is that close to that she can openly at least express the things that have gone wrong with her, the things that have been negative on her life uh, and the things that she's kind of had to overcome. It's a nice look into who she is as a person to show her determination almost to get over certain things that might have negatively impacted her life and kind of push herself in a different direction, uh, taking care of herself more or forcing herself into certain other situations or being certain ways. And while it has worked in some ways, it hasn't in others, as Mitsumi puts it, that it wasn't the way that she was kind of talking about her and the things that are good about Mika isn't necessarily a compliment on her personality in a way, because it still isn't very good, right? And that's not something that, that is something you can work on, but it's not, it's, I don't know, it's not something that's as easy to change as appearance, or like like the way that you physically present yourself and i think that's i think that's really what it just comes down to and because the way that she compares herself to others the way she presents herself to others the way that she puts on a mask and hides who she really is and acts different with certain people and it's it's something that i think she at least can fully understand she's not oblivious to exactly who she is and the way that she is and she is somebody who probably wants to change that, but just doesn't know exactly maybe how to go about it or become that as she's been able to solve the recipe in a way to go about changing the things that she didn't like about herself in the past. She's kind of reached a point where that's no longer the issue. And now it's just how kind of messed up she is with her personality and how changing that might not be as easy, but learning from somebody like Mitsumi who can take the positives of the other people around them and apply that in some sort of way, it might be the first step that she really needs to take to kind of change herself up a little bit. For a majority of the second half of this episode, we get the actual matches and everything occurring, uh, and we get to see some 
other sides of Mika, sure, where she kind of is rooting for Mitsumi to kind of do things a bit, and especially when she gets like hit and they're targeting her during the that one of those matches, and she's very like adamant about being there and kind of standing up for her. It was a nice moment for her to kind of see, and it seems like Mitsumi's definitely growing on her. But mainly, what kind of goes on between this half, Mitsumi being determined almost to bring these these pickled goods that she brings in uh and give them to shima or the other guys in the class but her being kind of embarrassed in a way to do it as she goes to go ahead and do it she gets very nervous uh because all the girls are very are like looking up to him are in, in are in awe of him and are basically like in love with this dude and i mean mika's no different and most of the girls aren't and they can at least appreciate the way that he looks and his appearance uh while they might not know him that much but the way that he comes off appears very nice and happy and just a good person to everybody too, right? So there's what's there not to like, right? But it makes it difficult on Mitsumi trying to hand the stuff over due to the fact that all these girls are swarming Shima in a way, uh, just watching over him while he's playing. Afterwards, they kind of all go up to him and get all excited about him. It's interesting just to see her kind of determination in a way of wanting to be there for him and wanting to cheer him on and root him on, but being kind of nervous and struggling to work herself up in the courage to kind of go out there uh but it was also nice to see we really got our first i think this might be the first we might have had one more that i'm just not remembering like glimpse of her really being able to read the room in a situation and she's talked about how she wants to do that before and usually she reads it wrong and sometimes she reads it right but she gets it wrong and <laughs> certain areas this time i feel like she really got it right where she understood if i go up to him now it could cause issues for him it could cause issues for me uh, just because of the way that all these girls could be wondering like relationship wise between us like what's going on why he's giving attention to me this type of stuff maybe i should just keep my distance and find him in a different situation uh later on that doesn't <laughs> go so well as she just decides screw it i'm gonna go in and go cheer for him uh which was really nice to see though while we're kind of like talking about this and working up exactly how she wants to go about handing this stuff over to him we find Kanichka and he essentially brings up the idea that Shima might be very lonely as a person uh, which is something I've thought about a bit I've never really talked about much but I, I have thought about it a little bit and I think it's a interesting idea to bring up and meets me being able to recall situations regarding them and her understanding he was the first friend that I've had he is somebody that I care about a lot, but does he feel the same way sort of back towards me, which is something that constantly can go on in your mind. And literally everybody I think has experienced that before is being worried about how much maybe somebody else values you versus how much you value somebody else. And if you guys are kind of on the same page or not, uh, I'm assuming everybody kind of listening to this has had a situation where they've really liked somebody, whether it be a just friend or somebody romantically or something like that but then the person they've you've been concerned just how they kind of reciprocate the feelings in a way whether they want to be your friend as much as you do or whether they want to be in a relationship and like you as much as you know like are you on the same page kind of thing and her being like i've never really thought about where he might be at and her then her kind of applying that into thinking about why was he like the way that he was on the first day towards me why was he so nice to me why was he trying to go out of his way to help me out why was he why does he still do that to this day right like what exactly is going on with him and then her also like just thinking about the idea of all this other stuff that he's kind of hidden in and before what exactly is his deal uh and what does he have does he is he lonely too is he missing that person in his life is he missing that thing that he can feel that he can openly talk about and discuss the negatives that he has going on and everything about that which is just a cool way for her to kind of also have more insight and in her kind of try and read the person a little bit more and understand maybe where they're they're coming from or why they're doing the things that they're doing a bit more which is nice to see uh just being able to pose a question like that and being able to have some thought everything that's going on uh we kind of wrap up the episode though with mika just realizing as shima's getting swarmed by this group of girls and he's looking forward and kind of only really noticing mitsume uh, or at least what we appear to be that or at least his group of friends and the people that he kind of associates with and being able to only really pay attention to them in a way but mika mainly bringing up the idea that sometimes you need something to kind of complete you in a way you need something that you don't have and that might be what people are looking for. Well, having common interest and common ground on certain things is important. I think it applies with all situations, friends, romance, like everything involved, where you 
don't necessarily want somebody that's the same as you because we are never really going to push yourself out there and experience new and different things uh, if you like the same exact things if you always do the same exact things if you don't have somebody who can kind of challenge you on your ideas and the things that you like or try and put you in different situations and stuff right and you need well you can be similar you need somebody that's different enough to at least drive you in that direction a bit more and i think she mika herself is realizing this that me to me needs somebody like shima almost to kind of give her that courage and that confidence to go out of her way and like do these certain things but Shima might literally need somebody as infectious and in just the way that Mitsumi kind of is with other people and the way that she is as a person. He might need somebody that's that different in his life to kind of complete him and kind of put him on a path to not being as lonely or feeling like he really has somebody or has somebody that he has a strong relationship with. While she's also probably realizing that that makes it even harder for her to kind of interject and put herself in that situation to possibly have a relationship with him because she might not feel like she's enough or might not feel like she is what he needs to kind of complete him if that makes sense at all but i believe that's kind of the path in which we're going on there so overall would i say that the mika redemption episode i guess this is i don't know if i'd call this an entire arc here was successful it depends on what your definition of that would be because i do i like her or a little bit more now just due to the fact that i understand her sure am i in love with her as a character no uh, <laughs> she's definitely got some room to to grow and to do things and got to figure out a bit more i definitely have so far enjoyed probably all the other characters that have been majorly you know focused on more than her so far so gotta gotta grow with her a little bit more but that's okay it was only an episode i can't i feel like you can't change your entire opinion on somebody in one single moment like this so i don't know i'd love to get some yuzuki focus i feel like we really haven't focused enough on her uh, so unless she literally is exactly who she presents herself as, which is almost never the case, uh, at least there's something that she's got to be kind of hiding like that. I, I would love to get some focus on her a bit more and understand her as a character because I really, really like what we see from her so far, but it's such a small sample size. Also, just to add her... Her relationship she has with Kurume has been really, really nice to see. Well, we haven't really gotten a lot of it. Just them literally like today, her seeming like she's always kind of with her. Like when they were observing uh, the other people playing volleyball and they were just standing on the top like they were together. Like she seems to be on her side. <laughs> like she wants to be friends with her. She's kind of pushing for her, doing her hair, all this other stuff. And I really, really like to see that, that she's kind of forcing her way through a little bit, but trying to break this other person out of their own shell a bit. And that's one of the reasons also why i like her so much and i'm very excited to hopefully learn more about her so hopefully next week if not hopefully at some point though uh excited to see what's next though if you liked it all hit the like and subscribe do mean a lot to me feel free to follow me on twitter and my anime list both links are in the description check out the other videos on the channel leave any comments about this episode or this series in general as well as recommend anything else you might want to see me watch at some other point that's going to be all from me i will be back next week for episode six you guys have a good one and thank you for watching